Let's take a moment to review the situation. Both Einstein and Bohr agreed that quantum mechanics had to at least treat quantum objects as indeterminate before measurement. Imagine a horsefly weaving drunkenly down a hallway towards a wall of flypaper. Its flight path is so erratic and seemingly nonsensical that we cannot know for sure where on the flypaper it will hit. All we can know is the probability distribution. Where Einstein and Bohr differed was in where to go with the theory from there. Bohr believed that the movement of the horsefly is fundamentally indeterminable, and before it hits the flypaper, it is better understood as a whole swarm of flies, which mysteriously vanishes as soon as one actually hits the flypaper. The individual and its swarm are complementary. We can only understand the total phenomenon by switching back and forth between the two models. Einstein disagreed, arguing that the individual fly, whether it is in a swarm or not, must still be individually determined by something, and that something must be a local variable. That is to say, the variable must not exceed light speed in its effects. The variable must operate within the constraints of space and time as laid out in the theories of relativity. It must affect things by touching them, either directly or through an emitted photon of energy, or perhaps the fabled graviton of energy, etc. The repeatable violation of Bell's inequality indicates that Einstein was wrong on this one. There are no local variables determining the behavior of the individual fly. We cannot account for its flight path by appealing to the wind, or to some faint aroma drawing it along, or to anything which affects the fly by touching it, pushing it, acting upon it. The fly really is as good as a swarm until it hits the flypaper. And yet Bohr is not entirely correct either insofar as he offers no sufficient explanation for how entangled particles coordinate their states upon measurement. There must be something which we can call a determinant or a variable which mediates this coordination, since perfect coordination cannot come from probability alone. Einstein assumed such a variable must be local and must be operating within space-time and obeying the speed of light. This assumption was Einstein's mistake. The Bell tests indicate that photons and other particles are influenced by non-local variables, i.e. causes that propagate their effects outside the boundaries of space and time. This conclusion was, I think, implicit in the discovery of Planck's constant. If there is a limit to size within space-time, then there is a limit to causation within space-time, meaning there must be a limit to bottom-up causation, i.e. smaller, more fundamental things affecting larger composite things. Photons are beneath everything, but nothing is beneath photons. Photons are themselves the carriers of space-time causation in the form of energy, how are they themselves to be caused within space-time? There are no means left to explain their emergent wave-like properties in terms of bottom-up causation. Therefore, we must conclude that there is top-down causation instead. That is to say, the emergent waveform is somehow independent of its constituent parts. The wave creates itself in a sense, by influencing the particles in a non-local way. Holes are more than just the sum of their parts. They are metaphysically independent entities that assert their own right to exist. It is as if the universe were an enormous bureaucracy, and Bohr and Einstein are trying to track down who is in charge. They assume that the best method is to follow the money trail and see who is ultimately funding this whole operation, i.e. providing the energy for causation. They start with the Bureau of Psychology and find out its funding comes from the Bureau of Biology. The Bureau of Biology gets its funding from the Bureau of Chemistry, which in turn gets its funding from the Bureau of Quanta. 
So they get a meeting with the director of the Bureau of Quanta, Mr. Photon, and they ask why he apportions funding to the other bureaus in such and such a way. Mr. Photon replies, why, I'm just following the protocols handed down to me by the Bureau of Chemistry. You'll have to take this up with them. Turns out, the Bureau of Chemistry gets its orders from the Bureau of Biology, which takes orders from the Bureau of Psychology. The bureaucracy is an interdependent whole. The funding comes from the very bottom, but the instructions on what to do with that energy come from the top.